Aries is asking, what are your thoughts on speaking in tongues? For some churches, it's a sign of being saved or born again. I experienced it in a local church here in the Philippines where this thing happened during a prayer session. It's kind of weird. Definitely <laughs> weird. Well, my friend, um, Aries, I would um, definitely agree with you. And I kind of want to answer this question because, you know, I've actually experienced um, something similar. When I was first a Christian, um, I was about 14 years old when I um, first fully converted my heart. I grew up in the church and, you know, I, I loved Jesus as a little kid, but I would say like my my true conversion happened as a young teenager. And when I was 14, I just I just wanted to know the truth. I, I didn't care what church it was in. I wanted to, to just know God. I want to know the truth and I wanted to be in the right church that, you know, that lived up to everything the Bible um, stood for. And so I was going to different churches at that time. I've been to several different churches and denominations. I won't mention which ones, but um, one of them that I visited uh, practiced the gift of tongues. And they said, you know, you have to, you know, have tongues, the gift of tongues. Otherwise, the Holy Spirit hasn't anointed you and basically you're not saved. And so um, I went to this church a few times and the first time I was there, I had an experience where, you know, it was to me, it was kind of positive. Like I felt like maybe I was speaking in tongues or something, but there was no interpreter. And so nothing really came of it. But I thought, wow, that was just an interesting experience. Um, so I went back the next week. And as I was sitting there, I was praying very hard. I was like, God, I really want to have the gift of tongues. I want to speak in another language. I think that's really amazing. You know, your, your apostles did that. Well, when I was sitting there, I didn't never got the gift of tongues ever again um, or anything like that, like the sort. I don't really know if I had tongues in the first place, but I like I felt something. And so I wanted to feel something. I wanted to experience something, you know, supernatural. But I never got the gift of tongues. And um, as I was sitting there in the pew, I was looking around and people were saying all sorts of things that didn't make any sense. People were running around the church, rolling around, you know, wailing. And I felt God's spirit speak very quietly in my ear and say, Tina, look around, look at what you're seeing. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, my spirit is not here. And so I never went back to that church because I really felt that what was happening was not biblical or not even it was not from God. When you're screaming, when you're saying things that nobody understands, and it wasn't until years later that I'll show you from the Bible why I believe this is true. If you'll go with me to the book of 1 Corinthians um, chapter 14, and we'll read for a little bit of context, verses 1 through 5. So 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 5, and I'll just kind of um, piece through this chapter because it's really the entire chapter talks about speaking in tongues it talks about a couple issues that were going on in the church back in the time of the apostles one was speaking in tongues one was um prophesying and one was um whether or not it was right for people basically to speak out of turn during the worship service so um if you go with me to first corinthians 4 verses 1 through 5 we'll go ahead and read that for some context and Pursue, it says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you might prophesy. Verse 2, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. And it goes on to say, but he who prophesies speaks edification, or basically something that improves um, somebody's life, and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edif edifies the church. And verse 5 says, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. So the basically the what he's saying in essence in these first few verses is, look, I know you guys... Um, have seen tongues happening and it's you know um, it's it's a it's a pretty cool thing to uh, to hear or, you know but it's really not useful unless somebody's interpreting unless there's somebody giving a message that people can actually understand and he goes on to speak more 
directly about this um, as you continue in the chapter. Go to verse 19. So 1 Corinthians 14, verse 19, and it reads, Yet in the church I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. So basically, if nobody's interpreting, if nobody's understanding anything, that's really not doing what it was meant to do. So he's saying, I'd rather say five words in something you'll understand and you actually get something out of it. God is good and loving. <laughs> that would be more beneficial than, you know, saying a book's worth of something in another language because you're just like, whatever. It, it, it's kind of not helpful. And then again, if you read in verses 22 and 23, so again, 1 Corinthians 14, 22 and 23, it says, therefore tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. And verse 23 says, therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place and all speak with tongues, and there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, will it not say that you are out of your mind? And I would say yes. <laughs> um, so basically, the reason God gave tongues in the first place, and you read about it in another place in the Bible, was that you were supposed to speak in tongues so that other people who spoke those other languages understood you and said, this is a miracle because you're speaking my language and you don't, you're not from my country. You know, how amazing would it have been for somebody to come from, you know, like Ethiopia or from, you know, the, the East, the Far East or, you know, anywhere else in the world. And, you know, they've never seen these people groups, yet they could speak in a language they understood only by the power of God, by the Holy Spirit. That would make them a believer. So that was the purpose of, um, of tongues. But if they don't know, like, what language you're speaking and you're not speaking their language or your language, they're going to be like, y'all are crazy. And so Paul recognized that. And so, yeah, you're right. It is weird. <laughs> um, if you read just a few more verses really quick, go to verses 28 or 27 and 28 in that chapter. So 1 Corinthians 14, 27, 28. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or three at the, or two or at the most three, each in turn and let one interpret. And verse 28 says, but if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. So he's saying that not everybody should be speaking. The, the gift of tongues is going on. Only two, maybe three people should be doing it. And somebody needs to be interpreting it. If nobody's interpreting, it needs to stop. And somebody in that, that person who's speaking in tongues needs to just be quiet because it's not helping anybody. It's actually taking away from the church service. Um, and then just two quick verses. Verse 33 just to make a few last quick points that Paul has to say here. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. And then if you don't mind reading verse 40, which is the last verse, I believe, of that chapter, it says, let all things do be done decently and in order. So God is not the author of confusion. God doesn't make, you know, doesn't give gifts that confuse and actually turn people away from from jesus that's not the point the purpose of tongues is to bring people to jesus and you have to be very careful with this because obviously the devil can mimic and make counterfeits um, of anything that god does right uh, if you read about in revelation there's so many counterfeits that the devil has um i mean that's literally like all that the devil does is just try to imitate god and distract from something true and beautiful now, I want to tell you a quick story, and then I'll close. But um, the reason I say this is because, you again, you have to be very careful. And the Bible says, test the spirits, whether they be of God. And I remember um, there was a time that, and I've heard actually more than one account of this happening, where somebody went to a church where they were speaking in tongues. And somebody s began speaking in an unknown tongue, and they were just saying things, and they didn't know what they were saying, but people were um Somebody stood up and said, I'm interpreting. And they're saying, oh, praise be to God. And oh, this and that. And, you know, we need to do this. And somebody, a stranger had come who actually spoke that language and said, no, no, no. I know what they're speaking. They're speaking Arabic. That's my mother tongue. And let me tell you, they are cursing God in that my language. They are saying the most filthy, disgusting, 
things against God in my language. And they said, okay, you can leave now. And he never basically said, don't ever come back because he called out this guy's lies and, um, you know, called out what they were doing in this church and that they were just trying to put on a show. And whenever you do anything that's not based on truth, that's not based on Bible, on the Bible, um, obviously that gives the devil <laughs> a big open door to come in and put on a show and distract from from the truth so again you have to be very very careful when it comes to the gift of tongues but again follow those guidelines that are seen in first corinthians 14. you know there shouldn't be more than two maybe three people there needs to be interpreter and it should not be chaotic it should be something beautiful and amazing um rather than something distracting and just weird uh jay what do you have any other thoughts on that uh, yeah, so I think an interesting verse for me is Isaiah eight nineteen. In that one, uh, it reads, And they shall say to you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep. And that mutter, Should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? So here it's talking about, you know, basically the wizards and, and people dealing with evil spirits and what sort of sounds are they making? They're making, making these peeps, these strange noises, and that's really pagan practice. Mm. That's not how God speaks. When God speaks, does he ever speak unintelligibly anywhere mm -hmm. through the Bible? I mean, no. the, the only times would be when God specifically wanted a pagan king to rely on interpreter one of God's people, like um, the writing on the wall for... Belshazzar. It's one of those rare times ever when someone needed to interpret for God. But, um, it, you know, if you also go back and look at history, the Tower of Babel introduced differences in tongues. Everybody had one tongue, one language, and God introduced a confusion with many languages in order to slow the progression of evil and break up the human race and have them spread the earth like they're supposed to. But again, that's that was a temporary measure, got introducing some confusion, but they still were speaking intelligible languages, at least within the groups. Those tongues were understandable. And, uh, and it's interesting, Matthew 6, 7, Christ says, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. God is wanting us to really speak with meaningful words, not vain words, and really just speak, convey. Um, so, yeah, I really look at the Bible, and it's really consistent on what really it should be, as Tina laid it out. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, that's what I want to be real clear on. And, you know, if you want to see a good example of tongues, because, I mean, it's not all bad. You know, tongues is not meant to be something terrible if it's the true tongues from God. And just if I can just share quickly two quick verses in Acts chapter two, if you look at verse four, this is the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit fell on uh, the apostles. And it says in Acts chapter two, verse four, um, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. And you see in verse 11, um, you know, people were gathered from uh, all uh, around the world. It says, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. So mm -hmm. if, if anybody <laughs> is hearing the wonderful works of God, they're seeing, you know, hearing the gospel then yes, that is the gift of tongues for other people who don't speak your language to hear the gospel in their tongue in a way that they understand. I don't think that would, I, I've never experienced that, but I think that would be yeah. amazing. So um, that is the true gift of tongues. It shouldn't be something that's <laughs> weird. <laughs> like my Kind of undoing thing. the Tower of Babel, which was mm -hmm. to slow down wickedness, and then God will overcome the confusion to allow us to preach the, the message. Amen. So, so I have a little bit of a question related to that with a, an experience I had uh, when I was traveling abroad and going to churches in different countries where they weren't speaking English in church. And there was a couple experiences that I had where, um, like there was one, I was at a church that only spoke Spanish. The whole thing was in Spanish and I didn't speak Spanish. But it was like when I was hearing them, them preach, it it was like I was hearing the gospel. Like I, you were I, comprehending it. I was comprehending what they were saying, even though it wasn't in my language. 
And that happened to me also in um, in India when I was at a, at a church there. And again, like they were they were preaching in in a language I did not understand a word of, but yet I understood quite a bit of what they were saying because there was so much love and so much communication that coming through that that wasn't even verbal mm -hmm. and is is that a component of, of speaking in tongues I, I would say yes i i think that's a great example of modern day speaking in tongues and or or at least the the gift of interpretation mm. so the speaker was speaking in his language but you were interpreting it so mm -hmm. um and that's related to a question that blaine asked don't know if we're able to Put it up right now. He says, would speaking in tongues be applicable to this time or only during the time of the apostles? And that's a uh, great question. And I say, yes, it still happens today, even as uh, Wendy say, said she experienced. And I've heard stories of people who would be playing DVDs in English and people who, let's say, only spoke Arabic or a different language were able to understand also mm -hmm. what was being said through these DVDs. So God is working in ways so that people can speak and others can understand so that the power of the gospel can be preached throughout the world. 